Hello, and welcome to this demo on OpenShift for Beginners. In this demo, we will look at deploying a multi-tier example voting application on OpenShift cluster. I have the application code in my GitHub repository, forked from the main example-voting-app. I've made a few changes to add basic authentication between the services. To start with, we create a new project in OpenShift cluster. I will name it voting-application. In the design of the application, we saw the various microservices that will be deployed. We will start with the front-end voting application that will be used by the user to cast a vote. However, this is dependent on a Redis service, so we will deploy the Redis service first. However, we can't see a Redis service in the service catalog. If you do not find a required service available here, you can add one yourself. Since Redis is a common user case, we are sure to find it in the OpenShift examples. Search GitHub for OpenShift and Redis template. You can find a template for Redis under Examples under OpenShift Origin Repository. I'm going to select the Redis-Ephemeral-Template. Copy its contents and select the Import YAML slash JSON option in the UI. Add the contents and click on Create. On Creation, Select the Save Template option to add the template to the catalog items. Refreshing the browser shows the new Redis service. This can now be used by anyone to deploy a Redis service on demand. We will now select the catalog item to deploy a new Redis service. Leave all default values and specify a password for Redis. We will set it to the same password configured in the web application. Click on Create to deploy the Redis service. On deployment, note down the connection information. The Redis service is now available by the name Redis for other applications in our project. The next step is to deploy the front-end web application. The source code for this application is under the Vote folder, and we see that it is written in Python so we add a new Python application to the project. I cannot specify the Git repository here as my application is not in the root of my Git repository, so I must select Advanced Options to specify a subdirectory within Git. In the Advanced Options, I provide a name for my application, followed by the Git repository URL, and the context directory must be set to the subdirectory containing my application code, which happens to be slash vote. I will leave all other settings to default and create the application. This creates a build and deployment configuration automatically, and we can see the progress in the UI under Overview. Once the build is finished and the application is deployed, select the link to access the application externally. We now get to the voting page. Casting the vote, however, doesn't work, as you can see. It complains about invalid password, we haven't really specified the password used while deploying Redis anywhere during the voting app deployment. The voting app expects the password to connect to Redis in an environment variable by the name Redis underscore password. So we go back to the voting app deployment configuration and add a new environment variable by the name Redis underscore password and specify the password for Redis. Casting a vote is now successful, as you can see the check mark next to the vote. The first part of our application stack is now working. Let us now focus on the other hand, which is the result application. The result application is dependent on a PostgreSQL service, so we first deploy that. PostgreSQL is available as a catalog item by default, so we will use that. The database service name must be the name used by the applications to connect to the PostGRE database, which in this case happens to be DB, so I will use that. The username and password used by the applications are updated accordingly. Note that there is a better way to work with credentials using secrets but for the sake of simplicity, we will go with this. We will then create the database service. The next step is to deploy the result application. The result app is based on Node.js, 
we will add a Node.js application, and as we did with Python, we will select Advanced Options, provide a name to the application, the Git repository URL, and the context directory is now going to be slash result. From the application code, we can see that the application listens on port 4000 by default, and we can override the port number by passing in an environment variable named port. So we will add an environment variable named port with a value 8080, so the application is available on port 8080. Then create the application. Monitor the progress of the build in the overview page. Once deployed, the application is available on the route URL. Click on the link to access the result app. The result page displays the results now but it says 50-50, and we did cast a vote earlier. Going back and recasting the vote has no effect either, and that is because we haven't deployed the worker application. We will do that now. We want to deploy the worker differently now. So far, we have been relying on Source 2 image build strategy. This time, we will implement a Docker build strategy. We will, however, add the application as a normal Java application. Select Advanced Options and provide a new name, Git URL, and Context Directory, which will be slash worker. We will leave all to default and add the application. Ignore the automated build that runs, select the build configuration, and click on Edit YAML to edit it. Change the strategy from Source to Docker and get rid of the From section. Click on Save and start the build. The build goes through and pushes a new Docker image. Once the image is deployed, access its log to see the votes being processed. Accessing the result page now shows the results of the application. Changing the vote has an immediate effect. Perfect. Well, that's it for this demo. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next.